Okay, um, this is four o'clock in Korea, and you have different time zone in, in Asia. Welcome to Asia Connect fifth call info day today. We welcome all of you, and it's quite um, valuable time for us and can be for you to understand our COPA proposal procedure in fifth call. So I'm Sangyun Kim the head of project management team of Asia um, Tain Star, Tain Star Corporation Center. Now, I'd like to proceed to today's event. Let me briefly introduce today's uh, agenda. First of all, the Louis Hyono Choi, who is the executive officer in Tain CC, will deliver opening remark. And then uh, me, I will try to introduce our fifth call briefly. And after that, the Lotion and the Jennifer will deliver the, the, the recommendation and really quite good tips for the potential tenderers for the fifth call. And follow up will be the Q&A. So we try to ask you to put some questions on the chatting window. Then we will try to pick some of it to introduce or to try to respond to you. And this event will be held during the one o'clock. So uh, we try to make it effectively doing. Okay, first of all, I will try to let the mic to the, uh, the Louis Hyono Choi, the executive officer of TNCG. He will deliver the opening remark, Louis. Yeah, thank you, Hang Kim, uh, for introducing me. So, uh, good afternoon in Asia and uh, good morning in Europe, uh, partners. Uh, on behalf of Tain Star Corporation Center and Tain community, uh, I give my uh, warm welcome to all participants uh, this uh, webinar meeting today. Uh, I'm Luis Hyono Choi, uh, the executive officer of the uh, Tain Star CC, Tain Corporation Center, and uh, project manager of Asia Connect whole project. And so uh, facing the global uh, crisis of COVID-19 pandemic is very terrible. And so we have been uh, through unpredictable difficulties and dangerous situation, and so many challenges too around the world. However, our RNE communities and its uh, our network infrastructure have contributed to uh, our society and people uh, by offering virtual activities. For example, uh, like this meeting. And so uh, services in education, works, and our whole daily life too. I think so that. Today, our Tensta CC and our uh, community, steering committee, uh, invite this uh, potential uh, proposers and professionals, experts for the fifth call for proposal preparation. Uh, is we call the input day uh, for our call for proposal day. And so this time, the steering committee chair and vice chair uh, will share valuable know-how and information too, and which will be the main point of the evaluation criteria and practical tips uh, for uh, make a success for our call for proposal and participation too. It will help your proposers and that can be presenting idea uh, to the real in the future. And so I give my special thanks to Asia Connect Steering Committee Chair uh, Angie and Vice Chair Lotion and other our whole steering committee members too, and who will present us the Q 
keynote speaker of the webinar too. And so we are uh, waiting uh, for a creative idea and proposal for the TAIN and RNE community uh, by our Asia Connect network and whole activities too. It is our goal for make a success for our Asia Connect project too. Uh, in the uh, in the variety situation and variety environment too. Uh, finally, I hope the COVID-19 pandemic around the world will speedily recover as soon as possible. And uh, I wish you all good health and good uh, fortune uh, in Asia Connect community there. Thank you very much. Uh, enjoy our, our info day for uh, fifth uh, call for proposal. And so uh, one more uh, talk. So welcome to join our Asia Connect uh, project activities. Thank you very much. We just, uh, thank you. Thank you, Luis. Uh, yeah. We just we just have his I mean deliver speech and um, <clears throat> you're quite quite uh, quite valuable. Then I'd like to proceed the agenda today. The second one was the introduction of fifth call. Uh, so I will try to. Share my screen. Um, Asia Connect activities are be implemented through the several work packages and the COPO proposal is action for promoting collaboration idea and supporting the related activities with, uh, with the financial support. And through the COPO proposals, Asia Connect support collaboration program, sorry, collaboration programs for the whole community across Asia Pacific region. So as you see, we have the five work packages in our Asia Connect. The work package 226 was covered by the COPO proposal. The work package two is related to the capacity development of NRANs in developing countries. And work package three is Re research and education network design and operations. Work package four is development of specialized network product services and applications. Work package five was promoting Asia Connect enabled r and &E collaborations for societal benefit. And work package six is also focused on the bridging the digital divide in the de developing countries. Based on this, we have uh, over 24 Asian countries participated and over 2000 engineers are uh, get benefit and over 8.7 million euro was invested. Through the call, more than 300 proposal was submitted, submitted, and among them we have 67 proposal was awarded. And now we have fifth call. I mean, that is will be caused in 10 months lead time from concept note to the contract, so seven months for selection and three months for con contract. An activity implementation will be made from March 2020, 2022 to February 2023. It's about the 12 month. And basic objective is related to our work packages, as I mentioned in the previous pages. But at this time, we focused on gender equality, women's participation, in regional diversity, enhanced utilization of TAIN network and COVID-19 uh, mitigation and digitalizations are our focus topics. And schedule, now we are releasing the, the COPO concept note in last May, and we are expecting your input by the end of uh, 13th June 
And their consignment note devaluation will take 1.5 months. And after that, we will release the another uh, invitation to the full proposal submission to the September. And after that, the full proposal evaluation will be done in, in during two months. So basically we expecting to release the award notification on 8th December, as top of December. And after that, we will try to contract with the awardees through three months. That's the, our expectation. And general guide, you may see in the RPP document, but I just picked pick up on some of it from, it from them. The scope of proposal should be aligned with each work package. They utilize online-based activities with considering this pandemic situation. Outcomes should be achievable within the period of the proposal. Any output outcomes will be made available to the public and to the wider research and education community. Participation of private sector is welcomed, but it should be not for profit. And one more thing is very important is location of action will be done in Asia region, especially in our 24 partners country and economies. And evaluation for concept note, now after you, after put, after tenders are submit their concept note, we will get through the evaluation based on these two big criteria. The first one was relate, relevance. Uh, those are objectives of priority of the COPA proposals and particular needs and constraints of the target countries and clearly defined final beneficiary and target group and particular added value elements. In terms of design, indicate the expected results and explain rational and methodology. Analysis of the problems and align with the capabilities and identify the risk and assumptions result will be realistic and benefit relevant issues related to our, our focus items already mentioned in, in the previous page, for example, gender equality and the women's participant and the regional, uh, regional diversity and enhanced utilization tain network and mitigate COVID-19. So this concept note will be uh, submitted through the, this link, which is the Google uh, survey, but there we are also understand there are some countries are really diff difficult difficult to utilize this link. So otherwise you can send it your proposal, I mean your concept note via the Asia Connect call at tncc.org. The deadline is 13th of June at 23 and 59 second minute in as a Korean standard time. Thank you. So uh, maybe you are aware of the this information in the our the RP, RP document, but I just try to pick some of it for the focus. I mean, emphasize that you need to do it. You need to say it. And the follow agenda is the the tips and our experience so far by the our uh, the Asia Connect steering committee members. The lotion will be come up for the these tips to you. Lotion. Thank you, Sanyu. And I hope you can see my screen and hear me well. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Go thank ahead. You. Thank you, thank you Sanyu. Right, so uh, the <clears throat> next few minutes, we'll share uh, the steering committee who is running uh, or like steering the project, uh, their perspective on uh, the chances of increasing the proposal acceptance. So the idea is we are taking a few points from what we learned during the fourth call for proposal, particularly the concept note. So a concept note in the fourth call for proposal, we had, um, we had about 150 submissions and uh, only a few, only uh, about uh, one third or less is selected for the next round. So based on that uh, experience, we will share uh, a few 
tips. Uh, the, just to start uh, with uh, the discussion, uh, uh, some uh, a set of caveats first. So we are not uh, giving these as official in a part of the official call. So these are just uh, sharing experience and therefore you should not consider these as the only and the official information on how we are doing the evaluation process. They are all discussed in detail in the uh, guidelines for applications, or guidelines for applicants, which is already released uh, as uh, Sanjay was highlight highlighting. Uh, if you want more details, you can go to the 10 star CC website, which is tn.asia. And uh, from there you can download all the documents relevant. So that's uh, the official uh, details of the documents are there. This is just some uh, sharing experience. So just to uh, start uh, the point uh, the, regarding concept notes, why, uh, what is the overall idea of having these concept note selection or concept notes before we do a full proposal uh, is the very first one is to save some time, uh, everyone's time, uh, including the time of, uh, particularly the time of the proposers or the writers, uh, proposal writers. So the proposal writers, uh, what he realized at one point is uh, they are spending a lot of time and then uh, when uh, we were unable to accommodate all such proposals, it's a lot of time wasted. So what we decided is to introduce uh, this concept note idea where we expect uh, the proposers to submit a shorter version, very short version of uh, the proposal. And then the steering committee and the evaluation panel will go through the proposals and select a certain amount from that for the longer uh, detail full proposal. So such detailed full proposal, uh, we expect the proposers to spend a lot more time and uh, even the evaluators will also spend a lot more time in evaluating individually. So in terms of uh, what is expected is, uh, you, you are expected to obviously follow uh, the guidelines that was already given, a specific guidelines on what to do, what is expected, also a template uh, on concept notes are given. So you can take the template and follow. Plus, uh, you have to follow the general guidelines that are given there. Please spend a little time looking at uh, the uh, guidelines that was given. Uh, and the guideline has two parts. One about the concept notes. Uh, what uh, Sanyung presented is also the same. So we have a separate evaluation for the concept note and another evaluation later for the full proposals. So we are particularly focusing here on the concept note. So depending on the uh, proposed activities, a concept note should uh, possibly include the following items. So these are all uh, described nicely in the concept note template. They are asked, they are put as separate nice, uh, separate items and therefore uh, it is easy to, for you to follow, but just to uh, com for completion, so we have, uh, we are expecting proposed activities, the objectives, the methodology, uh, benefits and outcomes, what are the risks that you see, uh, an overall budget plan. Even in the concept note, we expect a budget plan and a timeline. And uh, if you are forming uh, multi uh, country or which is expected generally, if you are forming a team, the team detail, I uh, have to be there in the concept note. So, uh, and also it has to like the concept note, you should have a, a general uh, uh, delivery plan and the main objectives that has to be clearly uh, focused there. So now specific details. So uh, Sanyung in fact has shown you there are uh, various work packages. Uh, to some extent he explained also what they are, but if you go to the call for proposal, you will see a uh, very detailed uh, description of uh, each work package. It will say, okay, work package two, this is what is expected. Work package three, this is what is expected. Or if you are having a project, uh, particularly a, a project that span across multiple countries in this region, then you have to uh, take your project and go and match it with the right work package, right? So that is very important. So now we are dis uh, discussing a few items regarding work package two and three and uh, uh, by work package, under work package two and three at the concept note level, a few reasons that, that we see from the last poll uh, for rejection, right? So giving this idea so that you can uh, come up with uh, better, uh, co better proposals this time, right? So uh, common ideas is one, uh, what I already mentioned, the work package scope. So uh, I'm just putting a small picture there to show 
Uh, this is a screenshot from the call for proposal uh, document, uh, the guideline. So every work package, you don't have to read it now, it's just to highlight the point. So uh, the every uh, work package has a box like that with the areas of interest, what is expected from you, and also the budget allocation for that particular work package for every project, every sub project. So one project, how much is the maximum budget that is allocated under that work package? So there, are, there can be several projects submitted under the same work package and awarded as well. So uh, we are uh, making sure, so the, the proposal that got rejected, we had issues with uh, the relevance, relevance of the work package. They were not related, right? So they were not, they were something else, not uh, even closer to anything that is described. By the way, the list of areas of interest is uh, just for a guidance. And you can understand from that guidance, say for instance, a work package four, it says uh, deployment of special uh, specialized network products, uh, products and services and applications and associated capacity development. So anything under that topic is relevant. Uh, examples and gen specific details are given under areas of interest. So if you put totally something else under this work package, it's very difficult for the evaluators and the steering committee to uh, take it forward. So scope is important. And then the, uh, the proposed capacity, so one, one other reason why, this, uh, why we had to reject some of the call, uh, proposals in the past call is, uh, uh, these proposals were focusing on one university or institution or two. It's within a country particularly and also one or two institutions. So we expect uh, through this uh, Asia Connect project, a collaboration among univers uh, universities and particularly among different countries. So uh, proposals that had just one institution in mind for their full project uh, are not considered uh, worthwhile. Uh, and uh, I already mentioned this, so one, one country type projects, if they are not worthwhile, again, they are not considered. So uh, you are expected to have multiple countries in your proposal. And uh, one other reason why the projects were rejected last time were uh, there were projects that had uh, no uh, indication of the usage. So as you might already know, uh, Asia Connect, we have a large uh, network of all our partners. So we have an academic and research network a physical network that connects all of us in addition to the human network we have. So here we are talking about the physical network, the computer network that we have across our region. Uh, so you can go again to the 10 star CC website or you can just search for Asia Connect Network. You'll find a nice network diagram with all the network connected. So we expect your projects to make use of this network in your proposal. So if you are not using, if you are not highlighting or showing that uh, this network is not used, you are isolatedly doing some other project, uh, then um, there's a high chance that you are not going to be successful. So uh, these were some reasons that are already there. And um, obviously like any other project, uh, the project has to have a focus and it has to have a clearly defined objective. So without such any project, I, project proposal will won't be accepted. That's a general uh, guideline as well, right? So that's again, highlighted here. And uh, now talking about the fourth and fifth work packages. So earlier we were talking about two and three. Under four and five, we have again a few um, items listed. General items are things like uh, the objectives, they are too ambitious. Sometimes uh, the proposals, we also have a timeline, you have to keep that in mind. Particularly if you take the fifth call, we have a one year timeline. So we have one year for you to finish the project. So we want you to have plans and uh, the budget is also there. So keep those in mind when you are planning uh, your project and make sure it's not too ambitious. If uh, the evaluators or the steering committee realizes that uh, this is going to be too much, this is too much to uh, really get done and then they can also be reject, uh, rejected. Right? So make sure the projects are clear and um, achievable, practicable and all that as well when you are putting your proposal. And uh, uh, so under four and five, it also has similar other uh, reasons, things like uh, there were pro proposals aiming for building a local center. Let's say in a particular university or an institution, there are proposals for building uh, a particular network center or some uh, similar uh, or high performance computing center, such proposals. They were just focusing on one institution and such proposals were not considered uh, favorable. And uh, um, 
there are others like i already mentioned in the previous call things uh, uh, work package four and uh, three two and three even four and five had uh, projects where there is no indication of how the uh, ten star like the ten network or the second connect network was used or they are not relevant so those are also uh, not they were also not successful uh, if, if just to be specific things like infrastructure development of institutions uh, were not uh, considered uh, favorable a specific institution and only the infrastructure development of such institution however i mean we are listing the uh, the the negative side things that can not be considered as successful but there are also let's say you you work together with uh, four or five institution across two different countries where you are sharing experience sharing um, uh, you are building capacity such projects are very much welcome uh, we'll mention some of them later as well so some other common problems on the fourth call we realized uh, uh, things like the budget plan uh, we the steering committee and also the evaluation panel uh, realized uh, the budgets were uh, sort of uh, we call uh, them bottom up meaning we already uh, i mean uh, so sorry so the budgets were like top down so budgets were prepared we feel like you take uh, the proposers took the maximum gap and then decided okay what do we do with this money right so that sort of uh, a feeling we receive uh, we uh, got so such proposals we didn't consider them very favorable because we want to make sure there is a need and based on the need you come up with the plan and then look at how you can satisfy them within the budget right so it, uh, we expect it to be uh, starting from the requirement and uh, going up uh, finding how much money you need obviously within the limited amount of, of funding we have uh, but not to just take every not to try to just take all the money and try to see how you can spend it so that uh, we don't want that to happen and therefore uh, such pro proposals were also considered not very favorable um, also non uh, feasible timeline so uh, when you are putting up timelines we looked at those as well when you are deciding uh, and like in general lack of uh, clarity lack of uh, outcome uh, identifying risk identifying who the beneficiaries are uh, those things are also if they are not properly considered we consider those projects as uh, uh, proposals as not uh, favorable uh, also when you uh, when you when you are putting a proposal you also uh, consider the uh, limitation the risk that you might have say for instance in the situation right like right now uh, proposals where you have travel is a limitation right at, at, at the current situation so examples like that you have to see like such situation and risk and uh, see how uh, feasible they are and how you can mitigate or solve such risk when you are preparing a proposal there can be other limitation there can be limitation coming from the uh, governing bodies there can be limitation coming from uh, regulatory bodies uh, and so on so if you see such risk please uh, identify them and also say how you are planning on solving or overcoming them in your proposal so we look at those aspects as well uh, from uh, because like uh, the evaluation panel and the steering committee we have a reasonable understanding of our region and uh, the partner partners and their requirements and their uh, situations and therefore we also will see uh, whether what is said in the proposal makes sense and whether it can be achievable so we decide a uh, course like based on that as well and paying special attention to the fifth call now those are like some experience and now uh, talking about special attention in fact uh, sanyung has already listed them down so i'll just go through them quickly one more time right so just to highlight a few points uh, so uh, sanyung already mentioned this so this call because of what is happening right now covid 19 and post covid 19 solutions we are going to give priority for such uh, submissions uh, that have uh, obviously satisfying the previous conditions all what he already mentioned it they had to be supporting our members of the beneficiaries and they had to have uh, make use of the dense network all that has to be there in addition if you have um, uh, covid 19 related solution that will be considered favorable uh, and gender equality is one that is already there in our main proposal uh, main uh, agenda but uh, more and uh, more than uh, ever like we have we wanted to highlight that one more time and also particularly we are uh, trying to focus on um, uh, the developing countries within the region so we have 24 partners and uh, a certain number are identified as uh, least developed and also developing and such partners when they are they are in the proposal and when they are beneficiaries we consider such proposals as uh, 
uh, more favorable than others. Right? So therefore, uh, list uh, identifying uh, beneficiaries, identifying them from the least developed and also developing countries are considered uh, very much favorable. So in your proposal, please, uh, particularly capacity building and all, please make uh, note of that fact. Uh, just to uh, finish, uh, and uh, uh, the the few other items are things like networks. We, we are trying to see that. Make sure that you are focusing on uh, the network, uh, making use of it, right? So that's because we are building a, uh, like the, the even the Asia Connect project is a reasonable amount of fund is used for maintaining this whole big uh, network across the region and also connecting the net regional network to uh, Europe and US and other part of the world. And therefore make sure you are uh, having uh, items or having a, a thought about utilizing this uh, uh, big network and the members, right? So uh, particularly we also have the 10 star CC network and also recently we also have developed this, uh, the 100G connectivity across the region. So a uh, usage of uh, this network, if they are identified, they are, they'll be considered favorable compared to other projects, right? So but a few other items are environments and climate change, uh, gender equality, we already, I already mentioned about uh, women empowerment sort of, uh, so gender equality and also equal opportunity um, and uh, differently able uh, support for differently able minority support, youth and regional, uh, youth support, uh, regional diversity, those are considered uh, so projects targeting these areas are considered uh, more favorable. So that's uh, basically all the list I have. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank all the steering committee members uh, for helping uh, and giving feedback on uh, their experience in the fourth call, uh, particularly the concept note evaluation. Uh, and uh, you, we used a lot of their insight in preparing this uh, presentation. And uh, uh, thank you and we'll, we'll move on with the question and answer session now. Sanyang, over to you. Thank you, Roshan. Um, uh, Roshan, you, you, may, you may stop the sharing. I'll stop. And yeah, yeah. and we, uh, we will try to answer some questions from, from the participant this time. So actually, uh, we have a couple of questions are noted and uh, Angie and other our partners are responsive. So, uh, so I'd like to pick some questions here, then we'll try to explain. And if you there are some additional explain, then Angie and Russian can help. Okay. Um, the first question was from uh, from Bin Tu. I'm I'm not sure, but he's from from Vietnam, and his question is: uh, How can we find the Netain network? And can you provide a link? And I'm he's leading an Asian project and have connection with Asian already, so. Uh, he just wonder how this network is built for this grant. Uh, actually, in our project Asia Connect, we have the 24 uh, economies are involved and we have NN partners who providing the network infrastructure in each countries. So in this thing, in this question, you need to find your local NN partner who manage the research and education network in your countries. And actually we have a list of participants or list of partners in our TAIN website. So you may find it. Ah, okay. You have been to from Australia. Thank you. So you, you may find uh, that the partners in our, uh, maybe in, in your Australia, then you can contact with Arnet, which is one of the, our partners in Australia. So and that's the I like one. To, uh, share the screen yeah. uh, with the with the website just to give a, give them a feeling. So that's the ten network. It's uh, I mean the website ten dot t e i n dot asia, and you can go there and you can find uh, all the partners, uh, and uh, 
So if you are in Australia, you can click there and find who the Australian contact is. I'm oh, sorry, I'm actually on the screen. Yes, right? Yeah. yeah. So that uh, that's the main website and the partners and other details, uh, things like what I mentioned about the fifth call, you can find that there as well. So the details about the fifth call is here. So you can have a number of documents, including the guidelines and also the, uh, the template for the concept submission. So the concept note submission that is here and the full proposal details are also there that is expected later. And the timeline is also here. This is Francis. Sorry, yeah. can I uh, yeah, please. answer a little bit? I think Vint, you can also get your, since you're Asian organization, you can actually get your partners that's in Asia uh, to communicate with the, um, the NRANs. And most likely they are already, already connected to them um, and, and come from that side. You know? um, so I think it, the whole idea is to, to support the community uh, especially less developed country community, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm glad from Australia you are coming out and um, helping out, uh, proposing something. Okay, thanks. Okay, thank you, Francis. The next question is from the, the Brooks Scofield. And his question was, have been ever been any project that supported gender diversity inclusion? And, and actually we have uh, two projects related to uh, the woman participant in the previous call. So one is from Myanmar and the other one is from the Pakistan. So each one is related to the work package two, it, really, it is related to the, the capacity building. So they try to pursue some uh, woman engineers, the capacity building in that section. So we we have those two projects was involved this uh, project. And the other pro the other question was uh, Dr. Site. And his question was how much maximum budget is allocated for each work package? Is there any Division of percentage allocation of budget if multiple participants from different countries. If yes, then how much? In in our uh, RP document, and there is a kind of the the allocation of the each the proposals budget. So in case of the work package two is fifty, maximum is fifty k, and uh, in case of the work package four five. Six is around the maximum to 150k. It's with with this money will goes to our the PI organization, and that's the maximum budget we are uh, considering. And if there's a multiple participant, then actually main main funding main grant will be goes to the one organization as a PI. So inside of the projects you can divide the funding with your partner by your plan. Okay, but can I, can I ask, uh, I just like to uh, ask Angie or Roshan if you have pick up some questions and uh, so, if you could for me. Uh, Sanyung, I'm answering some online. The, those in the chat, maybe you can uh, pick a few as well. I'm, I'm typing some answers as well. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'm doing uh, the same. Okay, thank you. And the question from uh, Mr. Bazai. So if a PI is already leading a 10 CC project, can apply for this fifth call? Answer is yes, you can do that. And we have uh, kind of maximum the financial support for the each organization, which is 250K. So your, pro, your previous projects, the financial support is less than that, then you may uh, propose your activity to this call. And there is a question from Muhammad Fahan. 
Sarge, I'm, I'm not sure my pronunciation is right. It's, what is the limit for the private entity participation? Um, as I mentioned, we have we are welcome to participate in the private sector, but is our project characteristic is non for profit and majorly focused on the benefit for our partners. So we welcome the private sector's participation, but it should be non profit purposes. So we are uh, understanding the private sector could be participate in the work package two to three basically. But still, they have uh, some room for the full five six as a, as a partner. So they the private sector can participate the call, but at the same time, they are uh, trying to pursue some kind of the non profit purpose to to the reach our objective. Okay, there's uh, another question from Dr. Sanjay Sud. His question is, if there is a national uh, project funded by the central government, can we get Asia Connect funding as an extension to, sorry, the scroll made me. Oh, where is it? Oh, sorry. Okay, I mean, I will try to another, pick another one. I mean, actually, same same questioner, uh, Dr. Sanjay Sud. He he uh, he he are not clear about the work package four five six would be most relevant for us. For if we want to increase access to telemedicine service to population in remote rural area in, in India. Um, Basically, uh, Work Package 4 is more focused on the network service and applications. And Work Package 5 is more, more, more focused on the societal benefit. And 6 is focused on digital divide. So you're considering topic, the telemedicine service to population in remote area can be remote kind of various uh, work package, but Mainly is related to the telemedicine. We are considering it can be related to work package five the most. I mean, the most activity is related to our societal benefit. So it can be divided like that. Uh, uh, okay, there's a question from Dr. Idris Sliman. Do you require an in-kind contribution from the PIs and its partners? If so, what is the minimum percentage? Uh, we, there is no mandatory in-kind contribution to the PI, but that is, in, that is, that is well, very welcome. I mean, like actually our funding is limited. So for uh, the visualizing your own purpose or activity, then you may including your own equipment or your facility into our project as an in-kind contribution. So this is promoted, but not a mandatory thing. Okay. Uh, there's a question from Mr. Pandey. Are PPP model-based project acceptable? Yes, we we already mentioned in our uh, our the RPP there is a PPP model is acceptable. In uh, pro, from que question from uh, Mr. Bazai, ah already. The, the can on institution have uh, multiple projects? Yes, you can do that. But as I mentioned before, there is a maximum uh, financial support up to 250K. And
Uh, there's a question from Muhammad Imran. Is the question is, is there any list of key challenges currently faced by the least developing countries and so that proposals can focus on filling the gap, whether in infrastructure development or capacity building? Thank you, this question. Um, we uh, actually, we are currently uh, proceeding the NNIS assessment, which is the collecting the information or requirement from the, our end partners. But we, we do not have uh, the final report right now. So we don't have the specific list for this thing. But as you mentioned, there's a infrastructure development or capacity building as main issue of our list development countries. That's the reason our work pack two is focused on the capacity building and our work pack three is related to the network operation and design. So your questions are more focused on work pack two and three. Uh, question from WGCW. I cannot see the left, left left of it. And his question is, should a proposal including all the work packages? No. You need to focus on one work package. That's the that's the basic thing. So you look through the all the description of work packages, then you may try to focus on your activity to the specific work packages. That's the thing we do. Uh, there's a question from Kan Zai. How many proposals will be funded in which work packages in the fifth proposal call? Um, basically, our proposal, our fifth call will cover work package two to five. We do not specific have a number of the awarded project. But our previous experience around 15 to 20 was awarded in our previous ex experience. So it, the number can be buried during the evaluation procedure and our budget. So Sanyang, just uh, there are a lot of questions about funding uh, available and details. So just to clarify, uh, for the Asia Connect part, there were some questions whether uh, those who have participated in the TN projects earlier, whether they can participate. Yes, you can participate. And uh, the total budget for an institution is uh, the total cap. The maximum for an institution is 250,000 euros. That's the maximum for a total, uh, the whole uh, uh, project period. So starting from call one up to call five, I will also have one more call. So the total is 250,000 euros and individual projects, individual projects depends on which work package you are selecting, there is a cap. So please go and look at, say, if you have work, if you are selecting work package uh, five, so the cap is 150,000 euros. So that cap is there for different work packages, depends on which one you pick. The total number of, uh, total grant for an institution is again capped at 250,000 euros. Right. Thank you, Roshan. Uh, basically, it doesn't matter which, even though which work packages, the total sum of the financial support from the Asia Connect will not be exceeded to 200, to, uh, 250K, and which is applied to the organization. So in if the one organization received the 250K so far, then it cannot be submitted. And it can be submitted, but we will uh, ex extract for during the, our evaluation. So it's not a, not a personal, personal thing. And we, we only see the organizational level. And the question for Pandey, are non-profit works in different verticals, can we lead or be part of multiple proposals? Yes, you can do that. So you can you can lead one proposal and you can be a part of the another another proposal as a partner.
in Do we have uh, more questions? Uh, the, yeah. the question from Mr. Suit, can Asia Connect funding be provided to an existing project? This additional funding would be sought for adding a new objective in the existing project. Um, basically, you can do that. I mean, actually that is the already done in previously. So if your okay. further activity will be make that result have a better impact. So it can be done, but you need to have a kind of clear clear relationship between the two, the old one and new one. And you need to emphasize of the, the, the specialized, I mean, specialty for the, your new, 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 work, new works in here. Uh, uh, professor, oh, sorry, uh, I have to pick the question from Chen Ring, and he's from Bhutan, and he'd like to know the Asia Connect support the existing network, which we are implementing at present. Uh, it's a little bit difficult question. Uh, we, we do not directly support the existing domestic network. But in, in our, uh, the work pack to six is related to our divi digital dividing. And that is part of kind of the supporting those kind of the network infrastructure uh, building. But in, for sure, we, we cannot, we cannot support continuously the network cost or network building for, for the each partners. So that, uh, Sanyang, there's a question about the field specific experts. Uh, 10 star CC is maintaining, we are maintaining a database, right? So we have some details on the, the website, uh, the link I shared in the chat. You can also go and find it is TEIN.Asia. So we have a certain number of experts listed there, uh, but you also can go and search, find others. And uh, so that's where it is. Uh, we are collecting experts. So there's a question about whether they, we can provide uh, some biotechnical related expert contacts. So uh, we have uh, uh, some experts listed on our the 10 star CC website. Thank you, Roshan. Uh, there is a question from Bin2 from Australia. Is there a limit on the number of partners involved? Uh, we, we do not have a limitation of the participation number. So yeah, you you may you may in encouraging or engaging many partners for your activities. Can I add to that that the role of the partners should be clear in the proposal? Okay, no limit, but the role should be clear. Thank you, Francis. A uh, question from Onta, from, he's from Nepal. The, they have a tech, uh, targeting the rural areas for Nepal regarding the post COVID-19 solutions. So we might need to create the network infrastructure and applications. Is those case, can we just target Nepal? Uh, answer is yes. And it can be related to work package six because rest, re, 
except Rock Package 6, you need to have uh, some the regional diversity. You need to invite or engage in more than two countries or some more partners are involved. But except those at Rock Package 6 is, can be focused on each country. Simon, there's a question about World Package 1, whether they can get some ground from that, so you can answer. We, we do not, we do not uh, proceed the uh, support from Work Package 1 in this call. We only cover from Work Package 2 to 6. So in case Work Package 1 is our main role to provide in connectivity to our partners and operation for our pops in in the certain places okay we have two minutes more left so can we cover one more questions there is a question about capacity building whether any field is okay as long as it makes use of the uh, you please go and look at the work package uh, details we have listed the details there so as long as it makes use of the Chain Star CC network and it collaborates between the partners, any project is okay, but it has to have those basic requirements which are listed under the uh, call for proposal. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Roshan. Uh, I think we covered most of questions are raised during the, the chatting windows and we have uh, more than 90 participants today. So it's quite more than my expectation and really delight to see all of you. And uh, we at TNCC are hoping you could show me a lot of good ideas through this call. And it can be a good chance for you to realize your idea to, to to, for you to make a benefit to our partners based on the, our Asia Connect network infrastructure. So uh, before before I finish, I just uh, want to closing short remarks from our our panel from from the from Jennifer. Thank you, Sangwei, and uh, thank you all very much for uh, spending time for today's info day. I think um, uh, the uh, uh, basic goal of today's meeting is trying to help you well understand the purpose of the fifth call. And also uh, this is our first time to share the previous experiences we've, um, we've faced. So uh, we hope it could be helpful for you for your submission. So thank you very much. Thank you, Angie. Lotion. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for joining. And uh, I, I, we hope like we will be getting a lot more better proposal this time and a competitive process. Thank you. Okay, finally, Luis, could you could you say something to the all of it? Uh, thank you. Thank you all. So at uh, this uh, uh, import, they really is very successful uh, for make uh, our Asia Connect uh, project whole. And so special thanks uh, to NG and Roshan. So just uh, thank you very much to uh, your contribution for uh, make our call for proposal too. And so uh, we have a procedure of so many calls uh, until fourth, uh, fourth call. And so I think that uh, uh, in the future, our fifth call is a, a successful proceeding too. And so thank you very much. And uh, we need uh, more help, everybody. And so we open all participants from around the world uh, via Asia Connect project and 10 networks. Thank you. Thank you, Luis. Um, yeah. Thank you all of you. And uh, yes, we just have a uh, one hour meeting with you, all, all in Asia. And we hope you to, um, to take this opportunity to understand our fifth call for proposal better. 
And if you still have a problem and on and the questions, please let us know and contact with us. Then we will try to un, explain some more details to you. Uh, thank you all. We'll try to close today's meeting. Then let's see in a future face to face. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. very much. Thank you. Thank you, Francis thank you. and Faluk. Thank you all.